A very good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirtley and Lebo is out of studio, but just for this week. I'm glad that you're able to join me for another exciting episode of TLC, where we bring you trailblazers and game changers when it comes to women's sport. Today, I cannot wait for the guest I'm going to introduce you to. She's in studio, uh, Sara Kumalo. I can't wait to bring her to you because we're speaking all about mountaineering, those game changers when it comes to tackling the mountains. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning to you and thank you for having me. Sarah, what a, what a, what a wonder it is to have you in, in studio to be able to share some of your story. Uh, mountaineering is not necessarily everybody's calling because it's not something that most young people are actually exposed to. Yeah. Where did your exposure come from? Um, uh, initially, it was just really, um, I, I loved hiking. I camped a lot. Um, growing up through um, the Pathfinder clubs, uh, like the guides, um, but through the church. Um, and um, I had Kili on my bucket list after visiting the US in um, 1996, actually, um, and eventually got to climb Kili in uh, 2012. Um, and we, when we summited, we raised money for a home in Benoni and uh, built an outdoor gym and a library for them. And, and that really, the bug hit from there. Um, I enjoyed it so much and I found a way that I can do what I love and make a difference in the process. Um, so that's where the journey began. Remember, you can join in the conversation. It's so easy at sports at SABC uh, and that's on Twitter. You're also able to find us on Facebook as well as Instagram. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. So climbing a mountain is about extending yourself, reaching for a far away aim, venturing to rise to the very top of it. In the early days of mountaineering, women did away with skirts and social norms to reach some of the highest peaks. And there are still women that were privileged to know yeah. that a still walk amongst us that are history makers when it comes to mountaineering, especially Absolutely. for women, isn't it, Sarah? Absolutely. I mean, women like Cathy O'Dow, our own uh, South African lady, that, uh, that was the first to summit Everest or both the south side and the north side. Um, and, and I think no sport should be for a specific gender, I believe. You know, we all can do what we can do. It's, it's what we choose to do effectively and mountaineering is no exception and for me it's really a place where I found, I've, I've found solace, um, I found a place of introspection and I, found, I find peace in the mountain and I absolutely love it and it's something that anybody can do and it doesn't have to be a high mountain like a Kilimanjaro and Everest, it can be that little hill behind your house, you know, it can be the Drakensberg, I've recently done the nine peaks around South Africa, we've got our own uh, mountains that obviously the world might not think they are mountains, mm. but you know, absolutely places that we can enjoy and be in nature and away from everything else before getting back into the bars of the cities that we live in. I like that quote from our game changer today. Just be out in nature. Speaking about quotes, we always begin the show with a quote, and this week's one comes from Maria Matola. She says, Believe in yourself and live life to the fullest. Of course, Matolo is Mozambique's three-time world champion and one-time Olympic champion, and she competed in six Olympic Games. Matolo is regarded as one of the greatest 800-meter female runners of all time. She retired from athletics in 2008 after accomplishing so much in her career. And of course, she had a hand in our very own Casa Semenya's career too. We'll be continuing to speak about those people that are breaking barriers and doing amazing things when the Ladies Club returns after this. Welcome back. You're tuned into the Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us. Remember, you can join in our conversation on social media. It's so easy, whether it's a Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the Ladies Club. We're going to continue our conversation with today's game changer, mountaineer and philanthropist, Sarah Kumalo. But let's bring you uh, some of those ladies that have been making the news recently. And this is a lady who actually was one of our guests a couple of months ago, South Africa's Norm Samatlango. She's been now elected as the Federation of Africa University 
sports president with her term running from this year to 2022. Now, Matlango was previously head of department sports administration at the Durban University of Technology. She's got a host of certificates behind her name and uh, she also has been doing amazing things when it comes to sports administration. Also was involved in uh, football administration at the highest level in the country. So we wish her all the best of luck. Let's continue our conversation with Sarah Kumalo. She is uh, Zambian born and she's a mountaineer who holds the record for the highest altitude climb for a black African female on Everest. She was awarded with a Ministerial Excellence Award in 2018, among many other accolades that she's raked up through the years. She's conquered some of the planet's most challenging summits, including Elbrus, Kilimanjaro and Aconcagua. Kumalo has won several awards for her mountaineering in the past, including the Golden Endurance Award in 2014. She supports organizations which focus on children from all walks of life and believes that education and literacy are keys to success. On that note, she even starts her own NGO called Summits with a purpose. We started talking to you about where this love of mountaineering actually began, but you've just managed to do so much with it. Did you ever think that just climbing a mountain would help you accomplish so much more? Uh, no, no, it didn't start like that. It really started as more about me uh, than anything else, uh, just me getting out there and doing what I love. Um, it's simply probably by accident that I discovered that I could actually do more with it, um, especially after trying to figure out where do I get the information. I mean, people that climb, they only tell us all the good stories. You don't know where to start. You don't know how to um, get on with it. Um, and, um, and I thought if I could do it, make a difference and actually expose some of the learnings and challenges that I find so that other people can learn from my school fees, you know, and that's where Summits with a Purpose actually started from. Um, and um, it's really ball rolling. People are making it happen more than myself, really. really I'm, I'm sure you also get this, that you are a black African woman. Yes. So not only a woman doing these amazing things on the mountains, but you, the color of your skin is not often one that we see on the mountains. Yes. Did you ever, do, do you come up against those kinds um, of stereotypes and biases? Well, I do. Yeah. Um, I do quite a lot, especially on the mountain, especially um, if you get into a group uh, on Everest and uh, you're the only one that's, um, that's black. Yeah. Um, sometimes you are one or two females in the group. When I climbed Akankagwa, I, I was the only female. And on Akankagwa, you have to share a tent. So you have to pick which one of these guys am I going <laughs> to actually <laughs> partner with in the tent. So it becomes interesting. And, and you get people that tell you, actually, there was a German um, ex, ex soldier, I think, Defense Force guy, that actually said, there's no mountains in South Africa. You know, what are you doing here? And, and, you know, a sense of achievement when I submitted and he didn't is like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's fun, but it's also an opportunity to educate the world that we are as good as they are and we can be as good as they are. And, and hopefully my child doesn't think that they need to be a European or an American to play on the global stage. We are fine where we are and we can play a good game as anybody else anywhere around the world. So that's what it's about. Everest. Yes. You currently hold the record for having reached the highest altitude. You haven't yeah. yet summited, however. Not yet. But mm. there's been three attempts in total? Yeah, three attempts. Um, yeah. So the first two didn't go your way, and from no fault of your own, mm. because of mm. an avalanche and because yeah. of bad weather. Mm. Uh, what has kept you going back? Because. Yeah. Besides the expenses, you know, there's also that very real, you know, physical challenge and threat. Yeah. So, so the reality is, you know, life as, it, as we know it is, uh, is threatening. It could be taken away from us tomorrow, you know, in my kitchen, in my room, at home, at work, on the N1. So it doesn't really matter where we are. So for me, that really doesn't mean anything. Um, the fact that I want to go back is because it's something that I, I would like to do and I believe I can and I'm able to do still in my lifetime and I want to give it a go. I think that um, if you think about Hillary, so Hillary, he summited Everest after nine previous failed attempts, you know. So I've got three, I still have a few more before I summit. <laughs> and um, as long as I can and God willing, I would like to give it another go. 
Is the fact that you would make history a motivating factor for you? Um, I, I don't think so, you know. Um, I, 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 there is a, a black American female that's uh, submitted. Um, it's, it's nice because I think it will motivate other kids um, coming from township, coming from backgrounds like me, with the skin color like me, to say that they can. Uh, it'll be a nice opportunity for me to be able to do that. But I think if that is a motivating factor, then uh, in 2017, I would have tried to submit at all cost. I think it's, it's dangerous to think that way. It's more important to just say, I need to be safe and I want to climb. Uh, but I don't want to climb at the expense of my life. You know, um, I think the mountain will always be there, but my, my life and your life is really fragile. So um, yeah, there are more important things to life than climbing the mountain. The mountain is calling you, though, it is, and absolutely. come next year, <laughs> April, May, yeah. you're going back. Yes, absolutely. The plan is to go back. Um, I, I've partnered with um, Elsie, who's another South African woman. She's got six summits of the seven, and uh, we plan to go back onto the mountain. Uh, there are two projects that we're working on. One is to try and attempt the Grand Slam, which is all the seven and the two poles, uh, which is 7.2 degrees. And uh, the other one, which is definite and confirmed, is um, going for Everest. And uh, Elsie and I are going to go for it. And that would be the two ladies going together. Speaking about women, because yeah. you mentioned it, yes. uh, that often you are not only the only black person, but yeah. also the only female amongst that's the correct. expedition. Yeah. A lady that's wanting to take a whole group of women is yeah. Deshaun Daisel, and that's she's correct. actually our trailblazer today. Yeah. So our leading lady today when it comes to mountaineering is Deshaun Daisel. Deshaun mm -hmm. is one of South Africa's leading female mountaineers with over 15 years of experience as a high altitude mountaineer. She's been on 40 major expeditions to five different continents. She's also successfully climbed Mount Miru, Mount Kenya, Mount Mount Elbrus, Mount Kalapata, and Mount Mont Blanc. In 1996, she made history by being part of the first group of South Africans to plant the new democratic flag um, uh, on the mountain as a novice climber. Deshan was only able to reach uh, Camp 2 at 6,500 meters on Everest, but subsequently returned to Everest in uh, 2003. And as we've heard from uh, Sarah, it is a mountain that you go to, and maybe you won't reach the summit, the first, the second, or the third time, but it is doable if you've got the heart for it. We're going to continue this conversation after the break. Stay with the Ladies Club. Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us. Before we continue our conversation with our game changer today, Sarah Kumalo, we're going to bring you this story. The South African Football Association has shown interest to host the FIFA Women's Soccer World Cup in 2023. FIFA has confirmed that nine football member associations, uh, the biggest ever in 29 years, have shown an interest in hosting the masses in four years' time. SAFA remain the only African football federation to have put up their hand to host the tournament. Banyana Banyana are currently gearing up for their maiden appearance at the FIFA Women's World Cup, which will be taking place in France in June. They certainly have been an inspiration for sportswomen across the board here in South Africa. And on that note, I'd like to know who really inspires you. Do you look to other sportswomen for inspiration or who do you look to for inspiration? I think all the sportswomen that are, are really just pushing boundaries, um, you know, Serena Williams um, a, 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 as an example. Um, if you look at Casta, you know, it's, it's really going against you know, all grains, um, irrespective of where you come from. Um, I draw inspiration from both young and old, women that have gone before me, um, like um, um, Cassie that I mentioned, Mandy that has done um, the um, seven summits, she's the first South African woman to finish the challenge. Uh, it's really everybody, and some, some of the women not even in sports, in business, you know, in anything that we are not expected to be there and we've pushed and gotten ourselves onto the table, that inspires me to actually be one of those that actually shows the next generation that we can. We've got a place on the table. We don't have to force ourselves in, it's there. It's up to us to actually sit and be comfortable. 
And what would be your advice though? Because uh, a lot of uh, girls are quite inspired yeah. when they hear those motivational words and then they actually have to get down to work and they yeah. are faced with really big challenges because it's, it's not easy. Yeah, I think it's, it's to work hard and to believe in yourself. Um, uh, one of the things that I struggle with is when you want the world to cheer you on. You need to be your own cheerleader before the world cheers you on. Work hard and make them believe in you because you believe in yourself. Um, I think many a times, we, you know, there's no time for sense of entitlement. I don't need to be at the table because I'm a girl. I need to be at the table because I deserve to be at the table. And with hard work, you will deserve to be at the table. And it doesn't matter whether it's a sport that um, people are very familiar with, like soccer, that everybody knows the rules, everybody watches it. You know, it was very humbling to receive the award from the minister with what I do, because all along I'm thinking I'm on my own, but it's okay, but I'm enjoying it. But hey, that was a pat on the shoulder to say, we see you. So you never know who's seeing you. Just keep on your on your trail and keep working hard and pushing all those boundaries in your own corner. So we mentioned your record that you hold on Everest, but yes. if we just put this into perspective, yeah. you were 99 meters from the summit. That's correct. Now for any of us that don't climb mountains, 99 meters is just a, it's a 100 meter sprint in the Olympics, it's close. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it sounds close, but uh, it could take you two, three hours to actually do that 99 meters. Remember, there's winds up there. Um, there is no oxygen. Yes, you've got an oxygen bottle. So there's a lot of uh, factors at play. And the 99 meters is not all that you need to actually go through. You still needed to come back um, to, to camp. So it's a lot more than just 99. I mean, it was so close yet so far. So sense needed to prevail and that's what happened on the day. And now you've got big plans to yeah. return. Uh, yourself and Elsie are wanting to do Everest again and that would that's be correct. four, yes. number four of the big seven, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be number four for me uh, of the big seven and um, an exciting one. And uh, I'm sure this is it. I'm hoping that I won't have to do nine like Hillary to be able to summit on the 10th but uh, Next year sounds like a good year, 2020. It's got a good ring to it. It certainly does, 2020. Yeah. Absolutely. Sarah Kamala reaches the summit of Everest. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's print the newspaper already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not going to be popping champagne corks no, just not yet. Not yet. You did mention, though, that there's another challenge that you want to do, and that's the yes. 7.2 challenge, that's which is a global Grand Slam challenge, mm. and no South African woman has ever completed it. No. In fact, only five South Africans of 66 people around the world have actually done this Grand Slam. That's and you're correct. hoping that Everest is going to be a part of it, but yeah. regardless, even if you don't go on that 7.2 expedition, yeah you're still going to be doing Everest. That's but correct. tell us about that 7.2. 7.2 de uh, degrees is uh, a, a campaign that uh, Eric and I are embarking on. Um, it's really doing the um, seven summits, the North Pole and the South Pole in one go within one calendar. Mm -hmm. The plan is to start in January and end with Everest. Um, and um, uh, like you mentioned, 66 people in the world have done it. And uh, the current record is held by an American um, he did it in 139 days and we're hoping to beat that. So the plan is do it in one calendar year, do it in record time um, and uh, be the only ones at the time that would have done it. So it's an exciting opportunity. We are busy working with sponsors to try and see if we can make this happen for South Africa and for Af Africa as a whole. When you're not on the mountains and yes. when you're not raising money, what do you yeah. do? So I'm a mother, first of all, I've got two boys, um, and uh, I'm also an executive at uh, Momentum, uh, Multiply. Um, I enjoy my job. I think it's as challenging as the mountain. I draw a lot from the mountain and from my job to do what I do. Um, and um, yeah, I hang out with friends, I hike, I run. Used to cycle a lot, don't do that um, too much uh, lately. But yeah, that's really all about me. Uh, Tell us about uh, the cycling because yeah. actually you had a massive accident which yeah. nearly put paid to any hopes and dreams that you have yeah. on the mountain. Yeah, so on the, on the 8th of uh, August 2016 while I was preparing for Everest, I was doing a lot of cycling as um, 
what I picked up, the guys that were cyclists and runners were having a good time in the mountains, so I thought, why not try it? And I was uh, doing a, a tour of legends, which is a, um, a stage race. Um, and coming down on the second day from a mountain, I think I probably was going at maybe 45 kilometers an hour with my bike. What I didn't realize is I had lost the back brakes. So when I tried to balance the brakes, um, it, it threw me off. And I woke up three weeks later in Mill Park. So I was in a coma for three weeks. Um, and after that, I uh, woke up, started walking in September. So I w got out of hospital end of August. Started walking in September, started running in, November, in uh, October. In November, I already had an entry for um, Soweto Marathon. <laughs> I ran the Soweto Marathon and finished. Yes. Don't ask me how long it took, but I finished. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and the doctor said I could still go back and climb Everest. So I went back to Everest and I set a record. And for me, ah. that's a testament of saying, you know, if you are willing to work hard and you're resilient, you can do anything that you want to. It would have been nice if I had summited, you know, what a story. But I still can go back and, and make it happen. Uh, um, okay, so what does a woman with a backbone of steel <laughs> do to relax? And if you had to go on holiday anywhere and take somebody with you, who would it be and where would it be? Oh, I've recently been to Zanzibar. I would love to go back. Um, and um, I, I think it's just you do nothing. You just eat and sleep on the beach. Um, but on a serious note, I love the Himalayas. There's something about the Himalayas that, um, not climbing, just trekking. The humbleness of the people, the, the simplicity of the place, you know. Um, you don't need much to be happy up there. You know, you don't worry, there's no cell phone signal most of the time. It's, it's just you and nature and appreciating what God has put out there. So it would definitely be the Himalayas. And if you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be? I think Nelson Mandela would be nice. <laughs> yeah. And why? I think it's, it's the humbleness of the man. Um, it's, it's the fact that way, when he had the right to be angry, he couldn't. He didn't. He chose the path that was um, harmonious for everybody at the expenses of probably what he was feeling inside, of what had been done to him. It's, it's that level of humbleness that you say um, is demanded of Christians, I suppose, and you see very little of, but people just talk about it. I think that that would be great. I told you I was excited about this conversation, and I know that you at home are probably like, oh, I wish we had a little bit more time, but unfortunately we don't. Sarah Kamala, thank you so much. We wish you all the best of luck in the fundraising for your efforts heading towards 7.2 Challenge, and then, of course, towards Everest with Elsie. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That's all we've got time for. Thank you for spending some time with us on this Wednesday morning. Remember that you can continue the conversation on social media. It's so easy. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. And until we meet again with Lebo, that greatness is never given. It's always earned. Bye-bye.